When it comes to the Rubrik APIs, one of the most common questions we hear is, how do I automate some task? For example, how do I automate taking an on-demand snapshot? Or when I add a new file set, how do I automatically assign that to an SLA? One of the easiest ways to answer that question is to complete that workflow in the Rubrik UI and then monitor which API calls are used in that process. To help simplify gathering those API calls, we've created a new Chrome DevTools extension that will log each of those API calls and then present those back to you into, in an easy to consume manner. To get started with the extension, all you need to do is go out to the Chrome, Chrome Web Store, find the API code capture extension, and then select the Add to Chrome, and then Add Extension buttons. Once installed, you'll be able to access that extension um, through the Chrome DevTools. There's a couple of ways of doing that. The easiest of which is probably to right click anywhere on a web page and then select the inspect button. Once that's loaded, you can access the new rubric tab here. You also have the option of docking these in a few different locations. The easiest which when it comes to the extension here is probably at the bottom of the page. Now, as you can see here, we're already starting to log some of the API calls that are happening in the background that are monitoring the progress here for the dashboard. Each and every API call will automatically get added to the page and we'll start scrolling down the list here. In some situations, you'll want to take a look at some of the API calls that are here at the top and the automatic scroll functionality may be a little bit cumbersome. So to prevent that from happening, you can simply choose the pause, pause scroll button here and that'll present that, prevent that automatic scroll from happening. Once we log a API call, we'll include a few different pieces of, of information for you. So we'll include the method. So on the rest side, something like get, post, or patch. Or if we're working with a GraphQL endpoint, we'll categorize those as e either a query or mutation. And then we'll provide the endpoint as well as the response time for that API. You'll also notice that on the right side here, each of these calls have a green, bo green border. That signifies that the API call was successful. If there are any issues or any kind of errors detected, this side border will be red instead. Once you hover over one of these entries, you'll also see a new copy button added to the left side. If you click that button, you'll automatically copy both the method and the endpoint, which can be handy if you're trying to add this to a new script. You'll also be able to click on each of these entries and we will show you both the request body, in this case, the endpoint didn't have a request body, as well as the full response body that was returned by the API. These request bodies or response bodies will also be fully highlighted um, using some syntax highlighting to make it easier to read. One of the other kind of common feature requests we hear is, uh, I only want to work with a specific workflow. So how do I only show those APIs for that workflow? So going back to the example that we mentioned earlier, let's take an on-demand snapshot of a vSphere VM. But again, we don't want all of these APIs that are kind of already log clogging up that workspace. So what we'll do is browse out to the point where, where, where we are ready to complete that action in the UI and we'll choose the start recording button. Once we select that, we'll clear all the previous entries and start monitoring new ones that are happening here. So we'll go ahead and select the take on the main snapshot. We'll select an SLA, go through, complete that workflow, and then we'll click the stop recording button. And this will provide a simpler view for you to consume what's actually happening on the back end. In this particular case, we wanna look at this post request, which is calling the VM or VM snapshot endpoint. We can access that and take a look at the request body and see we're sending it the SLA, SLA ID. And then we can take a look at the full response body as well. Once you're done and want to resume kind of regular recording, all you need to do is select that reset recording button and you'll continue to get any kind of API call monitor as part of that process. 
So that's a quick recap or summary of the code ex uh, API code capture extension. Um, we really hope you find it useful when it comes to monitoring um, any kind of rubric API call that's happen happening.